Welcome folks. Today I was going to be talking a little bit about uh, automotive uh, fuel filters. Uh, you can see that I have an assortment here. Um, the first two are out of Rochester carburetors, uh, probably in the, oh, the 70s range. Uh, they Probably later 70s I've seen them in. Uh, this one here is probably out of a early um, Motocraft carburetor two barrel. Uh, Fords and American Motors I've seen them on. This is kind of a generic thing. Uh, I've seen them used on uh, small block uh, Chrysler products. And the last one here is a fuel uh, fuel injected filter. It, uh, it runs well over 50 psi or pounds per square inch. Uh, getting back to the, um, the pressures that, that these ones run at. Uh, for the Rochesters and the Motorcraft, they're generally well under 10 pounds per square inch, 10 psi. Somewhere more in the range of 5 to 7 psi. Same with this one. These are mostly for carburetors, these ones. But like I say, this one is for fuel injection. Uh, they have to have these ends on them here. They're threaded. And you have to tighten them down with the nut and a fuel, steel fuel line that goes in there. And uh, as far as location of this one, the... Um, the fuel injected one, it's out of a mid 90's uh, General Motors minivan. It uh, has a metal strap that goes on here and a single screw that goes into the frame rail. Uh, it's about halfway down between the front and back tire. You just sort of get under there and uh, work your wrenches and take the strap off and just replace it that way. Usually use an ice cream pail to catch the gas that leaks out. I also use that method of uh, depressurizing the fuel system just crack a nut a little bit so that it starts to drip down and into the bucket. Uh, other fuel pressure relief uh, things that I've seen done in uh, instructions and manuals would be to the effect you get uh, into the engine compartment and then you bleed it off that way and you got to use a rag and gas. You don't want that in your vehicle. So I do it from underneath. I bleed off the pressure just by cracking one of these uh, fuel line uh, nuts and let it drip into an ice cream pail. Plastic one. Okay, we'll roll a few of these out of the way. Uh, these ones here, you can see there's two different lengths. Um, most I've seen the short ones in is when the uh, they mount straight into the front of the carburetor on a Rochester. And these other ones here, or the other one rather, uh, is a side mount, sort of like a 90 degree thing off of the carburetor that I've seen. Um, there's uh, In these ones here, some do, some don't. I don't know if you can see it there. But there's a check valve in here. It's a rubber gasket that butts up against and creates a seal in the little fitting that you have to use uh, to get it tightened in there. Uh, some do, some don't have a check valve, a one-way check valve, meaning on the fuel inlet side from the fuel pump, it'll, it'll push the check valve in and allow fuel to flow through the filter and onto the carb, but it won't let the, the gas back down. Now whether that's a safety rollover feature and or uh, to keep the fuel from backing up in the line so you don't have to crank lo much longer to get the fuel into the fuel bowl. One or the other, maybe both. So that's it for the Rochester filters. Kind of small if you ask me. I'd much uh, rather have maybe a, a larger one before this or eliminate this altogether. Way too small. On to this one here. You can see it's out of a Motocraft. Uh, probably a two barrel carburetor, early 70's Ford or American Motors. It, what it has on here is a tapered uh, pipe thread. It's a 1 8 inch NPT and it just basically screws into the carb. And on the other end you basically have a uh, rubber hose, couple of clamps. And let's see if you can find it. It would just basically go like this. I've made a, just a demonstration thing up here for you. It would just clamp onto the end there and onto your fuel line and away it goes. These are so easy to change. A little, little bit on the small side still, but you just screw them in, put a hose on, and you're ready to go. And on to the other one now. Fairly generic. They cover a lot of models. Um, on the end, the inlet and outlet uh, pipes, you can get them that I've seen in 5 16 diameter or 3 8 diameter. Same thing with this one. Uh, you just basically put it in the fuel line system. Uh, a hose clamp on either end, something that looks like so, one there and one here. And on the, most of them they'll have a marking on this, on one end or the other, indicating which is the in and which is the outside. 
it's important to know uh, the orientation which it flows because the filters are designed to trap more more of the stuff that's in your system and uh, make them operate the way the engineers design them. It says in right there, it's stamped on there, so that would face towards your fuel pump. And these ones are a fairly large capacity in comparison to something like that. I would definitely say even, well, definitely on a high performance engine, I don't, I don't know why anybody put that in a four barrel, or even that one, if you're talking a big block Chevy or something, you know, it just doesn't make sense to have something so small. Uh, this is a pre-filter into that wouldn't be too bad, but still, why so small? Bigger's better. So there's the generic one. Um, they do make these. I've seen these. I don't know if they still make them. The Fram company used to make uh, them. They were like a translucent plastic. You can actually see the fuel that's in there and actually have a, a view of the filter medium, the paper. Uh, they're usually made of some kind of paper. And you could actually look inside the filter and see uh, the fuel level as well as um, how dirty the filter is. Um, in the old days, if you go way back, maybe to Grandpa's days, they used to use a glass, what they call a glass settling bowl. It would go through there and the gravity would kind of kind of settle it out. Okay, now we'll just move along to the uh, the fuel injection filter. There's an in and out. It's It could be stamped on here in writing or one of the ends. I've seen them. It'll have out or in on either end. You have to make sure that you orient it in the right direction. Uh, the inside would naturally face the uh, fuel pump side, gas tank, and the outs output side would go towards your engine. Self-explanatory, kind of. Just look out for those markings. Now what I've done today is I've taken the exact same filter and I cut it in uh, half uh, with a hacksaw. Let you have a look in inside and see what we have and how they work. It's basically just one of these, only a lot larger. Now these ones have to take pressures well in excess of uh, 50 pounds per square inch. Uh, at idle it's somewhere around 50 uh, psi, probably higher uh, at other times, uh, especially when you first uh, actuate the uh, fuel pump and charge the system. Um, what what it is with, with this one here is, this is the um, the inlet side where the fuel pump uh, side is attached to from the gas tank. Once fuel starts flowing it hits the steel baffle here and then it goes around both sides and in to the filter paper medium from the outside in. Whereas this one, I think it's uh, it goes from the inside out. Uh, just by looking at it I'd say you'd have an exposure of much more material on the outside and better, uh, probably wider pleats, if you want to call it that, as opposed to the inside. So I'd say this is a superior design. So like I say, it would flow in from this end here, go around the baffles, around both sides, into the filter medium, and it would come out here into another fuel line and up towards the, uh, the fuel injection unit. So I hope that helps you with uh, what you wanted to know about filters or maybe you missed something in the books you're reading or whatever. But anyways, that's what I have to say for today. I hope you enjoyed what I had to tell you. So take care, folks, and have a nice day.